Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. We've got a packed show today. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed, live from Los Angeles. I'm Ebony K. Williams mm. here with Skip Bayless mm. and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, fellas. Thanks for having me. Ebony? Thanks mm. for coming out. Oh, man, it's nice to be on the West Coast with you. Yeah. How you doing? So, <laughs> Ebony, you have a law degree. Mm. You've served as a public defender. And nobody needs public defending more than this man <laughs> and his opinions. So please feel free to try to help him or save him today because he needs lots of help. I will do my best. All I'm going to say is, Ebony, if you got to watch him, he's slick like yeah. an eel. Yeah. Just watch him. I yeah. think y'all both are uh, yeah, as good as y'all take, man. He's always like an electric. Electric eel, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. You, you enjoy your time off? Yeah. 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 Okay. Just been getting ready for you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Say likewise. Mm. Likewise. Uh, mm. You guys both look fantastic. Oh, thank, you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Ice Cube and Hall of Famer yeah. Gary Payton are both going to be in studio with us later today, but we're going to start with LeBron James. Now LeBron was swept by the Warriors a little over a week ago. Mm. Now he's three and six in the finals. So all eyes on where he'll play next. Now his former teammate and Hall of Famer, Shaquille O'Neal, said LeBron's objective should not be chasing championships. Shaq said, quote, LeBron's book is already set. He's probably trying to get four, five, or six rings. But it doesn't matter. He's a legend, so he's set. So I got to ask you, Shannon, mm. do you agree with what Shaq is saying here? Should LeBron not be chasing rings? I strenuously disagree with Shaquille O'Neal. Mm. Um, you know Shaq. I know Shaq very well. But Shaq was, was playing on a different set of metrics than what LeBron is. Skip, at that point in time in Shaq's career, there was no way he was going to be able to crack the top three big men. If you just say big men, Wilt, Kareem, Russell, however you want to stack them. Mm. Kareem had six MVPs, six finals. Russell had 11 and five. Wilt had four and two. So by any metric, there's mm. nothing he was going to be able to do to change the narrative. Except for eye test. What did your eye test tell you? He was dominant. Yes, thank he you. He was dominant. Mm -hmm. Now, was he as dom Was his move as dominant as the sky hook? I don't know if there's ever been a move more dominant than that. 38,000 points says no. I, I hear you, but just quick point. I've never seen a more dominant offensive force than Shaquille yes. O'Neal. It wasn't pretty to watch, but right. go ahead. Skip, I feel people should allow other people to set their own agenda. Skip, they say you should accept no one's definition of your life. Well, let me take it a different step. Let me take it a step further. An athlete should take, accept no one's mm -hmm. definition of his career. Because at this juncture of his career, what mm -hmm. was Shaquille O'Neal, Skip? He was a complimentary player. His numbers mm -hmm. had decreased. Once he got to uh, uh, Miami in year yep. 13, he was 23 and 10 with 73 games playing 34 minutes. Then that dropped to 20 and 9 in 59 games mm -hmm. playing 31 minutes. That dropped all the way down in year 15 to 17 and 7, playing 40 games. Yep. You see why the narrative would not change on Shaq. What did they know, Skip? Mm. Shaq was not going to work hard in the offseason. Yep. Shaq was not going to put the time in. So everybody wanted to remember Shaq from Orlando to his final year in Miami. So that's what they wanted to remember because they knew as he was aging, he wasn't going to be the same player. LeBron James, since he's been back in Cleveland, 25 and 3, 25 and 3, 26 uh, and 5, mm -hmm. and now last year he was basically 28, 9 and 9, playing all 82 ball games. Mm, for the first time in his career. For the first time in his career, but there's nothing mm. complimentary about him. He is the centerpiece. So for Shaq to say, well, he shouldn't be chasing rings, that's all it's about now, Skip. Mm. He's the youngest to 10,000, youngest to 15, 20, 25, 30. So he has all this. He's the youngest to do this. What else is there for LeBron than to chase rings? The stats are going to come. LeBron James is in the mm. business of winning titles because mm. he's made that his legacy. He's accomplished. He has the MVPs. He has all those mm -hmm. accolades. How many times he's been Eastern Conference Player of the Year a week? How many times he's been to the All-Star Game? How many All-Star MVPs have he had? does he have, Skip? Now it's all about collecting hardware. And he's trying to find this perfect scenario. Where can I go and who can I bring along with me? Mm. Because I got to beat that team. Mm. There's a team out there by the Bay Skip. Mm. They've gone the four straight finals. They've won three. I've been to eight straight and three of my losses have come at their hands. Mm -hmm. I need to find a way. In the last two, I've only been able to take one game off of them. 
So, Skip, for LeBron James, rings is all it's about. And I strenuously disagree with Shaq because they're in two different parallels. Shaq, everybody wanted to remember that block of time, basically, from when he came into the NBA with Orlando mm -hmm. in his last year in the, with the Lakers. Yep. But after that point in time, Skip, his career started to decl decline. The numbers, the level of play, and the minutes. So this is a whole different variable for mm -hmm. Shaquille O'Neal. So I strenuously disagree okay. with that take. I got you. And I do agree with your final point. Those last three years, that was age 36 in Phoenix and then 37 in Cleveland, which was LeBron's last time around in Cleveland mm -hmm. before he went to Miami, and then age 38 in Boston. Shaquille O'Neal was just an eyesore. He, he was a shell of himself. He was a very sad, out-of-shape sight, mm -hmm. just clinging, hanging on, and if you want to call that chasing rings, I think he was just sort of chasing the end of his career. Right. He's chasing a pay. Skip, the teams he was going, you thought Phoenix. Nope. You thought Cleveland. You nope. thought Boston at that point in time, Skip, was going to go. Come on, for real, nope. Shaq. Nope, not for real. So, I do agree with the big picture of Shaq's point. LeBron's career, his legacy, has been forged in the eyes of those billions of blind witnesses out there led by LaShannon Sharp across from me because you, you've already decided he's the greatest ever, right? right. You, mm -hmm. you have already told me, for the record, that he's better than Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Yes. And a lot of people agree with you out there, again, blind witnesses who have no perspective at all on who Michael Jordan was or what LeBron really is. So that can't be changed, right? That's forged. That's in concrete. But that's also on the flip side. There's also those blind witnesses that are in LeBron, J uh, uh, Michael Jordan's corner. Mm -hmm. No matter what LeBron does, he can go to three more finals mm -hmm. and win them all mm -hmm. and be all of a sudden he's six and six mm -hmm. with, 12, with 12 appearances, 10 straight. And some will say, well, Michael Jordan was six and oh. So it works both ways, Skip Bayless. Don't pretend mm -hmm. just because LeBron, he has his fans, they're devout in their praise. Mm. There are some just as devout in praise mm. of Michael I know, Jeffrey Some Jordan. are objective and now, some are not. Well, so. when, when I find that some that are objective yeah. about Michael oh. Jordan, can you let me know who he is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, some just know the real <laughs> truth. So the point is that what Jason Terry said a couple of weeks back sitting right there on our show mm -hmm. was had, had a ring of truth. He was saying that, that he thinks LeBron's going to retire. Do I believe he's going to retire? I don't. But the more I thought about what he said, you, there's a case to be made that LeBron can't really improve that much on what he's already done because I can also argue with you he can only hurt his legacy as he tries to chase rings, right? If he stays in the East, let's say he gets back to his ninth and tenth straight finals. Mm -hmm. What if he loses those to fall to three and eight? That would tie Jerry West for the most finals losses ever. Jerry West was one and eight. Elgin Baylor, one of his teammates, was 0 oh, and seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what if LeBron fell to, to three and eight in the finals? Wouldn't that damage his legacy? Yeah, again? but we, we're going to talk about some topics a little later in the okay, show. Okay. All yeah, right. So. But I'm just saying if you stay East, that's one problem. Now, if you do go to the West, the advantage in the West, let's let's just do the Lakers, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. The advantage is you're going to run into Golden State probably in the conference finals. Yes. And if you lose the conference finals, at least you don't have another blight on your finals legacy, right? right? right. You're not going to lose in the finals. You just lost in the East, the, the Western Conference Finals, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. So, so I could argue that that would actually be a plus. But the difference in Shaq's legacy which was forged in Los Angeles with Kobe Bryant, where they won three in a row together. So they got upset by Detroit. But nobody held that against Shaq because Sha Shaq and Kobe were feuding. They both wanted out. Somebody was going to have to go. And was it an all-time great upset? Yeah, it was. Did they not take Detroit seriously enough? Nope, they did not. Is that held against Shaq in his all-time resume? Not really. Do people say, how dare you, Shaquille O'Neal, lose to that team, right? Well, I think, it, but it also, while we don't hold that against Shaq and Kobe because they were bickering, also, you, we might need to heap praise on LeBron because behind the scenes, although we didn't know it, Kyrie Irving was seething, wanting to get up out of there also. So for him to bite his tongue and not call mm -hmm. up, uh, an uproar or let that affect the play on the court. So maybe LeBron should get some credit for that, for keeping that thing mellow until it finally surfaced and Kyrie ended up being traded. Okay. So to me, in all objectivity from this side of the table, it appears that LeBron also has some tarnish to remove from his legacy that Shaq did not because 
LeBron did suffer the meltdown in that last go round the first time around in Cleveland against Boston, which his owner accused him of quitting in that that semifinal right. loss to the Celtics right. in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. And then he melted down against the Dallas Mavericks, his first finals with the Miami Heat 2011. But did he melt down? The owner said, but the owner have said some things, Skip. Okay, he that's said, in, against Boston. Right. Yeah. But did he melt down? You look at his numbers. His number says, no, he did not melt I down. I thought he melted down in four, five, and six of that series. I couldn't recognize him. And again, his camp put out all kinds of excuses about well, what was going on in the locker room. Well, in game six, he had 27, 19, mm -hmm. and 10. Yeah. I sure wish he'd melt down like that every game. Okay, but those are the kind of games if you watch, you say, where are you when it counts in the fourth quarter? You're unplugged, you're disengaged, you're not LeBron James. And then he clearly in four, five, and six melted down in the NBA Finals, the yes, first go-round with the I'll, Heat. I'll give you that. Okay, and then let this past Finals, I'm sorry, but he really melted down after regulation ahead of overtime of game one, and you can make a strong case that he quit on his team because he just threw in the psychological towel and said... I don't think I'm even going to shoot for the first two and a half minutes of overtime, during which they fell behind by seven points. Then he took four half-hearted shots, 0 for 4, and effectively the finals ended in game one because it was clear to his team that he just didn't think he was good enough to beat Golden State by himself, quote-unquote, and that was the end of the, those finals. And those are blights. Those are tarnishes on a resume. So you so, can also argue that Shaq didn't have to chase to undo things. Because Shaq wasn't going to be Shaq wasn't going to be able to catch Kareem. He yeah. wasn't going to be able to catch what Russell's 11. He wasn't going to get three more MVPs to catch Wilt in that aspect. But here's the thing. Shaq did get swept in the mm -hmm. finals. The Houston Rockets swept Shaquille O'Neal. Okay, he was 22. Yeah. Did it happen? 22 it, when he was with the Magic. Yeah, but he got it swept. It happened. Yep. Nobody but, even thinks about it. Nobody exact, remembers it. Exactly. Okay. But I do because you know why? I'm a historian, and mm -hmm. we're talking about this. Because the whole, why did he go to L.A.? He went to L.A. because he wanted to chase. He wanted Hollywood, but he also felt that Jerry West could put more talent around him than Pat Williams could in Orlando. No, that's Let's true. be absolutely true. Mm -hmm. So he started chasing rings long, long before. The thing is, LeBron James has always been on this quest, and he's staying on this quest. Skip, I get it. Look, what Shaq is looking at, he's saying, look at my career. But Skip, nobody thinks LeBron James is slowing down. People knew Shaq was going to be Shaq. If he didn't train hard in his 20s, what in the hell made you think he was going to train hard, eat mm -hmm. right in his mid-30s, Skip? No one. No so one. they said, Shaq, this is who you are. From 92 to, mm -hmm. oh, what, last, I think his last year was what, 03, 04 in L.A.? Uh, I believe so, yep. Mm -hmm. So those 12 years yep. that you had right there, Shaq, that's what we're going to choose to remember you by. And, Skip, that's fine and good because this same thing happens with Michael Jordan. We forget that, that he played with the Wizards because we don't want to. <laughs> see, when our heroes, Skip, oh. we don't want to remember them like that. Oh. Okay, but wait a second. Michael Jordan was out of basketball for three whole years after the Chicago he run. Stayed. Three years. Should have stayed. Okay, so he came back at 39 and 40. Does anybody count that? I don't, and you shouldn't. Skip. Was he? So let me ask you. So was that a different guy, or was that Michael Jordan? That was a different guy. No, it was Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. He was Michael Jordan. He went to the. Did he go to the All Star game? I think he made the All Star game too, didn't he, Skip? He averaged twenty and six. I can't okay. remember. Okay. So, but, but that's what I'm saying, Skip. Our heroes, we want to remember them, the shot. That's how we want to remember him. Mm -hmm. And we would have, but insatiable ego mm. and appetite to still hear that adulation yep. brought him back. So I remember him getting cooked. I remember mm. Kobe hanging 55 on him. Mm. You remember that too, Skip. That happened. What I remember is that this year I wanted to see LeBron James play a little bit of defense, and he quit playing defense at the expense of playing see, better offense. So at age 33, but in his 15th year, LeBron just said, I can't defend anymore. See, I can't waste my energy see, on defense. It goes from, it goes from a, a, an argument should LeBron chase more rings to you trying to get a slight okay, in? I'm, no, I'm not, it's not deep. a slight. It's from this point forward, it, whatever you're chasing rings, you're chasing only on offense. You're not playing defense anymore. Yeah, no. So it's not the same LeBron who was chasing you, rings when he went to Miami. You've after player come out here and say, Michael Jordan did not have the offensive workload as far as rebounding. I haven't offense. heard anybody say that except you. Okay. You're the only one. I, I don't know anybody okay, who said that. Okay, guess what? Gary Payton will be out here shortly. Okay. We'll see what let's, he has to let's, say. Let's do see because I showed you the stats. 
Six yeah. times in the postseason, Michael Jordan led the whole playoffs in usage okay, rate, ball LeBron, in hand. Okay, Le- Only once has LeBron ever led in usage but how, rate. How many, how many times, how many, how many uh, uh, double-digit assist games or double-digit rebound games does Michael Jordan have? He but- scored. That's my he, point. He won. He did what it was required to win, and he also played hellacious defense because yeah, it's required to win the game. We've seen LeBron, when needed to score, go get eight 40-point games in the playoffs, something Michael never, ever did, as proficient as he was as putting the ball in the basket. Michael Jordan went 6-0 and with six finals MVPs. What more do you want? See, see there you go. See, no, but it's just what is required to win the series, the championship, the game, whatever. What, Whatever is required, order, he just did it. In order for LeBron James' teams to yeah. win games, he must rebound, assist, and score the basketball, mm. where Michael Jordan was mainly a scorer of the basketball. He also played along two all-other, mm. all-defensive players in Dennis Rodman and Scottie Pippen, mm. who rebounded. Because, you know, there was a couple of times in those series, those when he went in the finals, mm-hmm. he was third on his team in assists and fourth in rebounding. Mm. When has LeBron James ever been third mm. in assists on his own team? Mm. Never. So, at age 33, LeBron finished 309th in individual defensive win shares in the regular season this year. And at age 34, a whole year older than LeBron, Michael Jordan, at age 34, was first team all defense, all NBA. If you don't mind, wow. me, if you don't mind me asking, as a year older, huh. who had more miles on their legs, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? I don't know. Michael played a lot of basketball at Carolina. He did, that didn't it's a count. Great school, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. Fine institution. This is, this is, this is, I just yeah, I love the Tar Heels. Tar Heels, that's my team. Tar Heels all team. life. Well, Hold on. It's not your team. <laughs> that is my team. You have been expelled from Carolina. Whoa, whoa, fandom. whoa, whoa, whoa. You've been expelled oh, after all the shots you've taken at Michael Jordan. Okay. That's, you're out. Ooh, you're Hold on. Out. Yeah. So are, are you are you you feel comfortable saying that at age 34, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan had more minutes on his legs? Than, Mike, than uh, LeBron James, who's gone to eight straight finals? Because do you do remember Michael Jordan took a year and a half off? He did. Okay. So I feel comfortable in saying, no, he does not. When you factor in three, okay. also Olympics. Okay, but you're the one who has admitted to me many times, sitting in that same chair you're sitting in right now, mm-hmm. that no, LeBron doesn't play defense anymore. You've he, said that. He doesn't play defense with the same tenacity. He cannot. No man in the history of the game has been asked to do what he had to do offensively. Carry that workload. Uh, let me, I'll give you another guy that could also assist, rebound, and score the basketball. Magic Johnson. Did he sit in the chair for 48 minutes? Of course not. But we're talking about Jordan versus LeBron, right? No, no we weren't. We were talking about Shaq and should, should LeBron okay. ring chase. Sure. Actually, and I'm glad you circles back to that because I have a mm. question for both you, mm. Shannon, and Skip. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Shaq wanting more rings and wanting Hollywood, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How much of the legacy of LeBron James at this point, if you take the argument that Skip made earlier that LeBron's basketball legacy in many folks' minds mm-hmm. is cemented, mm-hmm. right? He's right. one of the best of all time. Right. That's undisputed. Right. Uh, how much of this is about the other legacy that LeBron might be concerned about at this point, which is his impact on Hollywood and producing and that kind of aspect as well, that Los Angeles becomes a very attractive place, not just for a potential championship ring, right. but for the ability to operate in that space. I'm sure that plays into it also, Skip, because he's had put his, he's ex- executive produced a lot of shows, and he, mm-hmm. he wants that on his resume. But while you and I might be dug in one place or another. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that's in LeBron James's mind. Yep. He believes he still can accomplish, his, can accomplish more and change the narrative in his own mind. Whether or not you or I agree, you might be set in your place over here. I might be set in my place over there. There might be a few folks that's on the fence that can say, okay, if he go to two, two more straight finals, that's 10 straight. He wins them both. That's five and, and six. Okay, boom, boom, boom. I feel good now. But in his mind, the way he's playing, Skip, why would he not? I can see, Skip, if he was averaging 15 points, find somewhere where you're happy Mm -hmm. and just move on. Mm -hmm. Skip, the dude put in career-high numbers in assists and rebounds and was averaging almost 28 points a game. Why would he not go to a situation that's going to put him in the best situation to win titles, especially if that guy with the braids and San Antonio gets up out of there and goes to L.A., mm. or he moves somewhere, mm. and then Paul George can tag along. Now you're formidable for anybody, anywhere. Mm. 
I do, to your question, think that LeBron should semi-retire and then retire in Los Angeles. He belongs in Hollywood, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's a semi-retirement type of a move. I told you last week that the, the only move that would make this fly would be if he could talk Kevin Durant into joining him with the Lakers. I'm not sure about Paul George, and I'm definitely not sure about Kawhi. We're going to talk about that. Oh, Kawhi, I like bit. Kawhi. Yeah, you better. I like love it. it. Yeah. I love it. Well, the, show enough. The, the claw. The guy who quit on the, the Spurs. Quit. Okay. And you have to now question that's what got about it. what's he made of. That's what got Is that's he what, made of the right stuff. Keep on talking. Because yeah. guess what? He was hearing all that yeah. stuff because Greg Popovich made it seem like he quit. Yeah. Tony Parker and some of his teammates made it seem well, like he quit. They didn't make it seem like he just flat out did quit. Well, and we we're gonna, about to We're going to see that. moving forward how yeah. they look. Yeah. Without it. Yeah, he Obron loved to play in LeBron's shadow. No, whoa, don't do that, Skip. Yeah. Don't do that, Skip Bates. Yeah. I'm not going to let you defame that man up here. Well, with two defensive just, player of the year in the fight. Just hang on. Just hang on. I'm not going to let you defame yeah, him, Skip we'll Bayless. You hanging on. He deserves yeah. better. Hanging on. Speaking of hanging on, is <laughs> Tom Brady hanging on, or is he getting close to Basically. calling it quits? Mm. Mm, we're going to discuss mm. that up next on Undisputed. Tom should stop <laughs> chasing rings. Mm, yeah. No mercy. Tom Brady's coming off of an MVP <laughs> season, that's right. But he turns 41 years old in August. So Brady sat down with Oprah recently to talk about the longevity of his career. Take a listen. I think about it more now than I would than I used to. Yeah. I think now I, I think that I'm seeing that there's definitely an end coming um, sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, what does that end look like? Is that 43? Is it 45? Yeah. Is it? As long as I'm still loving it. I'm still as long as you're loving it, you're going to do it. Yes. Yeah, so, as long as I'm, I'm loving the training and the preparation and willing to make the, the commitment. But it's also, um, I think what I've alluded to a lot in, in, you know, in the docu-series was there's other things happening in my life, too. You know, I do have kids that I love. How adorable. And I don't want to be a dad that's not there f drive my kids to yeah. their games. And, you know, I think kids... You know, my kids have brought a great perspective in my life, you know, because kids just want the attention. You better be there yeah. and be available to them. Okay, Shannon Sharp, he won't put a number on it, mm -hmm. but he's talking about family and his <laughs> children. What exactly is Tom Brady telling us right there? I've never heard a guy speak so much in the last month, month and a half, maybe two months, Skip, and say absolutely nothing. <laughs> he said nothing. He said absolutely nothing. Oh, I think about it more now than I normally do. Well, how long are you going to play? Well, as long as I'm still loving it, I still love to compete, I still love watching all this, so I'm just going to go on. It seems to me, Skip, he's more hell-bent on proving Coach Belichick. Mm -hmm. You're not going to run me off than he does playing. He says, well, you know, I do have there are other things that are important. I do have kids, and I don't want to be one of those dads that's not driving his kids to practice. Tom, you're already that dad. Mm. Unless the... Is Gis Giselle expecting and we don't know about? Maybe he's about to have some more kids and he'll be able to drive those to practice. Skip, he's already miss missing soccer practice. He's mm -hmm. already missing recitals. Giselle, his wife, is already driving the kids to school. What in the hell is Tom talking about? He doesn't want to miss. Do you understand to be that level of great? To be that level of player? What you have to miss and how selfish you must be and the type of partner that it takes to understand that in all your selfishness, they're taking on the role of mom and dad? Hmm. Does he understand that, Skip? Mm, I think he does. So don't, don't give me that. Don't tell me I don't want to be the guy that's not driving my kids to practice mm -hmm. because you're already that guy. Because mm. guess what? When you wake up and go to work, the kids are not on their way. The kids are not, haven't even gotten up yet. Mm -hmm. So while you're on your, when you're at work in that meeting room and you're hitting that clicker, so either your wife or someone that's the help, they're getting the kids ready to go to school. They're driving them to school. Skip Bayless, he has said absolutely nothing. 43, Oprah asks him 43, 44. First of all, you notice, Ebony, he doing a lot more talking now. On the old TV 12, in <laughs> the old books, he coming out with something. He doing a We're lot more. We're more time right Yeah, now. he all yeah. of a sudden, he wants to open up and give us a glimpse on the mm -hmm. inside yeah. of what old Tom Brady's like. You ain't fooling no Shay Sharp. I know what you're up to. Yeah, Tom. but he doesn't just do a little Fox interview or an ESPN interview. Oprah, he, no. he does Oprah. Yeah. He's big. Yeah. Huh? He's Tom Brady. No, what he's trying to do is trying to reach a different demo because a lot of the people that watch Oprah mm. aren't necessarily football fans. Skip, come on now. Oh, you, man, you can't. 
I'm too big. Hey, I'm too big of a cat to be played with like a mm. cat. <laughs> you mm. can't fool those say sharp. So really? I know, I know what he's up to. Okay. But he said nothing, Skip. I believe he's more hell bent on trying to prove Coach Belichick. You're not gonna run me off. I'm going to play as long as I want to. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you think you're gonna run me off by mm -hmm. trying to ha yep. keep Jimmy. Jimmy's gone. Mm -hmm. There is no threat here for the wear for silver future. And I got the one guy in my corner. You don't. Mm -hmm. The guy that signs your check and my check likes me more than he likes you. Mm -hmm. So I ain't going nowhere. Mm hmm. Well, I agree. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, he said virtually nothing. But in Tom Brady speak, he said a lot because he used to say absolutely nothing. And now he's starting to turn up the heat on Belichick, mm -hmm. just little by little, just dropping hint yeah. here, hint there, hint here about well, maybe it'll be sooner than later that I will retire. Because clearly it became clear to him at midseason last year that Coach Belichick had cut bait with Tom Brady, yeah. wanted to run him off prematurely in Brady's eyes in favor of Jimmy Garoppolo going that, forward this coming football season. That sooner was now. It was, that was <laughs> now. And so battle lines were drawn, and Belichick lost that battle. Now, I don't know if he's going to lose the war ultimately, mm -hmm. but, but Tom Brady's ready to go to war by dropping hints, well, maybe, maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't, just to make them sweat a little bit, make uh, Mr. Kraft sweat a little bit mm -hmm. about what, what is his plan? Because remember a year ago, he was just flat out saying 45. 45, I'm yeah. I'm going to play till 45. Now, I don't know. It could be this. Could hit, be yeah, that. sooner than later, yeah. you know, hey, my kids are getting on up there. And What's Tom Brady proving, fellas? I want to ask you both. Is this about rings? He's got five Super Bowls. What uh, does a sixth Super Bowl do for him, if anything? He said, either you believe he's the greatest or you don't. I liked what he said about when he was asked, do you, do you like being called the greatest? And he said, no, because I'm still doing it. Mm. I'm uncomfortable with that. And, and I'm going to read a quick snatch of that quote that kept going, mm. which is your worst nightmare. But he said, I still feel like there's still more to be accomplished. I still feel like I can be better, be a percentage better. Mm. I still think I want to go out there and compete and play with a bunch of 22-year-olds. It's still a lot of fun. Well, that's the Brady I know and love, and I think at heart, at heart of hearts, that's still Tom Brady. He still is having fun playing football. At one point, at age 35, you weren't having fun playing football anymore. I have fun playing football. I have fun in meeting. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But the whole process yes. of what was required to yes. prepare for the football yes. right. and prepare your body, mm -hmm. which was starting to betray you because you played a different position than he plays, mm -hmm. and he's able to get away with some things you were not able to get away with physically. But here's the thing, though, Skip. Him playing, him getting another ring, how does he get those three losses off his resume? Because we're talking about LeBron James and his legacy already right. being cemented yeah. because of those six losses. So how does Tom Brady undo? So if he goes six, so that's six and three, does that change anything? Because Joe is undefeated. You see, people don't use the same, and I'm going to go back to you. Hmm. They don't use the same argument when people say Tom Brady's the GOAT because he has five. Nobody says, well, Joe's better because he has four. No, sometimes I do it to you just to make my point because mm -hmm. you quick to holler, Michael mm -hmm. Jordan is undefeated. Mm -hmm. Well, if Michael Jordan is the GOAT because he's undefeated in finals, mm -hmm. Tom Brady, therefore, cannot be the GOAT because he's been defeated. Mm. Well, let me be quick to point out that Eli Manning flat out stole one, the first Eli Brady Super Bowl, yeah. just stole it from yeah. him with the, the luckiest, according to Eli Manning, he agreed with yeah. me, yeah. luckiest pass in Super Bowl history stole that one from the 07 Patriots. Mm -hmm. And then last year, all Tom Brady did at age 40 was win the MVP and then throw and for a Bowl. playoff record 505 yards. You throw for No one's ever thrown for 505 yards in any playoff game in the history of the league, and he did it in the Super Bowl. And, and when he came to my restaurant, you know I got a restaurant, all I sell <laughs> is wins and L's, and I had the champagne, the ace of spades waiting yeah. for him. Yeah. That big old playoff performance that he put up, he was still had the best seat in the house, drinking champagne with an L. Okay. Skip Bayless, but also Wait I a second, wait a second. Tom Brady would <laughs> never come to your restaurant yeah, to begin with. Oh, yeah, oh, that man. would not. Man, oh, yeah. But Bill Belichick came knocking on the back no, door. No, 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 don't you do let this, me Skip. in? Don't do that, and, Skip. and you said, Coach, your defense just gave up to the backup quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles, Nick Foles, 41 points because you wouldn't play your best defensive back for reasons unknown, Malcolm Butler. He said, well, Shannon, right? he said, Shannon what about the year before when my defense shut him out for the last 23 minutes of the game mm. in overtime? He said, well, Shannon, what about in, in the AFC Championship mm. game when I gave up three points mm. in, the last 20, in the last 25, 30 minutes mm. of the ball game? 
what, what, what was Tom doing then? Mm. Okay, but Skip, how about this? I'll put it to you like this. I think also Tom doing some of the things that he's been doing, not no TAs, Skip, is one thing to say, you know what, I'm going to stay away. But he didn't stay away quietly. He stayed away publicly. He's on the back of a camel and cutter. He's throwing a football on a yacht in Monaco. So basically he's saying, okay, Ann, I'm going to play as long as I want to. I agree. And in the process of me playing as long as I want to, your way I no longer endorse. That is correct. I'm going to do it the Tom, the TB12 method mm-hmm. way. Yep. So the key interview wasn't the Oprah interview, but it was the one he gave to Jim Gray back mm-hmm. on April 30th. Remember right, right here in Santa Monica, mm-hmm. not far from where we sit right now. And that was to Jim Gray, probably the only interviewer he really trusts because they do a weekly hit on, I think, Westwood One Radio during the football season, Mm -hmm. remember, on the pregame show. And Jim Gray asked him, just to reiterate, to remind people, do you feel appreciated by the Patriots? And do, do you think you get the appropriate gratitude from the organization? And Tom said, I plead the fifth. Yeah. Mm. Was that not the strongest thing he's ever said? Yeah, of course. And then Jim Gray asked him, in conclusion... Are you happy? And Tom said, uh, I have my moments. You have your moments? I was you, you, wait, you, you're the reigning MVP and you have your moments of happiness? I didn't really have these moments, Skip, as mm-hmm. long as I knew I was the de facto guy. Uh-huh. And I, was, I knew there was not a guy in the wing waiting to replace me. Mm-hmm. And a head coach that was so willing mm-hmm. that he was re- a wet, a ready to mm-hmm. jettison me mm-hmm. even though I had won the MVP. But Skip, let me say this. Tom Brady did mention in his piece how driving his kids to school. And I don't want to say Tom Brady does not care about because I believe he does care about his kids. I believe he does want to drive them to school. That's nothing new. But my point is, is that Giselle or someone else is already doing that. So you feel very, very comfortable oh, in yeah. that side of it. Well, sure. So the, my upshot is, I still think he's going to play till he's 45. I give him two years max. Well, you keep going up max. a year. You keep I, I going up three, a year. I said three last year. You did not. Three. Well, what, see, once he traded Jimmy Garoppolo, then all best was off. Oh. So, I, so I give him two, 20 years. He getting 20 and Coach Belichick. But, well, we just see how this thing plays out because, you know, lose a couple of games and mm. now some more stuff going to start coming mm. out. Somebody's going to have to go, Skip Bayless. Mm. Eventually, it's going to have to be a decision. And you got to make a choice. Who will that be? Mm. Mr. Kraft. Coach Belichick huh? ain't going nowhere. Well, he'll say that, but who would you go with right now? What, what, if, you, what if you had to pick one of the Coach other Coach Belichick. Right okay, Tom, thank you. I really appreciate all the service that you provided for us. So you would give up three more shots at winning Super Bowls with a potential MVP that guy that in favor I of that coach who didn't play Malcolm Butler for one mm-hmm. snap in the Super Bowl? That coach, really? he picked Tom Brady. Oh. Tom Brady ain't picked I'm not no- sure he picked him. He but- picked him. And mm-hmm. anyway, the, all those guys that's come and gone, mm-hmm. they've won without him. So I know what he can do. He can find me some more, more mm. players. I trust him to do, do all the grocery shopping. Yep. Can you go find a quarterback like he that He can one? find him. He yeah. had one in Jimmy G. He, did. he yeah. had him in Jimmy G. Yeah. So you think Jimmy G is going to be as good as Tom Brady? Hey, he don't need to be as good. Mm. Coach Belichick said, I just need him to win one. Oh. To show y'all. Yeah. yeah. Competing legacies? Is that yeah. what I hear y'all talking about? Uh, I'm not. He is. No, well, this is, this is what this boils down to, Skip Bailey. You know this. This is always what it's been about. It's not good enough. To say we rock, it's always got to be Batman and Robin. Mm. Somebody's got to play second fiddle. And Tom Brady says, I got five rings, it's me. Mm-hmm. Coach Belichick says, I got five rings, it's me. Somebody needs 51% of the credit. Right. It's not good to give it 50 50. Mm. This is not a relationship so like. So you a- give it a little 51 to Belichick? No, I'm getting more than that. I'm getting about 75. Oh, mm. oh, mm. okay. 75. He picked all the players. That is so absurd. He picked all the players. He picks that, all the players. That's the most players. absurd thing you've Who ever seen. Who picks said? all the players? <laughs> oh, please. If I got a number, if I got a number What's one, the most important position in all of sports? And who picked him? Huh? Who picked him? He who plays felt- it. He, he picked him in the sixth round. Mm-hmm. So if he'd have thought, oh, this is Tom Brady, I'm going to win Super Bowls with this guy, wouldn't he have picked him in the second round no. or the third round? No, because Andrew oh. Bledsoe. So. Oh, they so I'll to... wait. I'll, I'll, I know he'll be sitting there in the sixth round, and I'll take him there, and he'll win a bunch of Super Bowls. Because they, they, all they did, huh. they, said, they saw that video at the, at the combine. Yep. They saw that body. Hmm. They saw that, 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 that he had a dad body at 21. Mm-hmm. They saw him run that 40 skip. They're like, ain't nobody touch, ain't nobody touching him before the sixth mm-hmm. round. You ever seen anyone throw a prettier football than this guy? He wasn't throwing like that back then. He's throwing the ball. He throws the ball better. Skip, I'm giving it. Why would you let me give him some credit? (sighs) 
I'm giving him some you, credit. You've been trying to retire him for three years. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Coach Belichick had him out the, at the door uh, this year. Mm -hmm. He did. Right. Well, the more they change, the more they stay the same. No mercy. ESPN, they report that Kawhi Leonard wants out of San Antonio, and he'd like to go to Los Angeles, preferably with the Lakers. Kawhi is reportedly frustrated with how the Spurs organization handled his quad injury that allowed him to only play in nine games last season. Now, he's eligible for a five-year extension this summer on his contract worth more than $200 million. But he could opt out of that extension and become a free agent next summer. NBA reporter Chris Sheridan says that there's a, quote, 0% chance that Greg Popovich will trade him to the Lakers or any other Western Conference team. Shannon Sharp, how do you see this playing out? He's gone. And I told you when this started happening, Skip Bayless. You told me? I told you when they started... We, Tony Parker talking about, oh, I had a more serious injury than him, and I'm back. No, Great. no, he said 100 times worse. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh so now yeah. you make it even yeah. worse. I'm going to, yeah. because I'm going to jump all over it in a second. Greg, Pop see, here's here, the mistake that was made, Skip. Kawhi Leonard and Tim Duncan have very similar personalities. Both are very, very quiet. They don't say much. They're very unassuming. And Coach Popovich thought the way he t coached Tim, he could get on, ride Tim. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying... Kawhi had a problem with him the way he was being coached. Mm -hmm. Kawhi had a problem when you guys thought he was faking it, that you guys didn't think he was seriously injured. Because when the head coach says, well, our medical staff has cleared him to play, and you have to ask Kawhi's camp and Kawhi's doctor why he isn't playing. And Tony Parker says, my injury, as you so eloquently laid out, was a hundred times worse, and I'm back. And then they have a team summit. They bring Kawhi in there, Kawhi looking around like, well, I mean... Yeah, my mom here, is it Mother's Day? I mean, somebody I hadn't seen in a long time. Why am I here? Bro, what's going on? Are you going to play? I mean, are you hurt? Well, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm two-time defensive player of the year. Mm. I'm two-time first All-NBA. I'm finals MVP. And y'all question me? Tell you what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm going to remove myself from this situation. Mm. I'm not going to even come around anymore. Mm. I'm going to go on about my business. I'm going to be training. I'm going to get ready, get healthy in L.A. Mm. Let me tell you how disappointed I am in this organization and the players and how you trammed me. I'm willing to forego $31 million to get up out of here. The team that trades a superstar always loses that trade because you're never getting value back. Mm. When they traded Kareem, when they traded all, you go back and check in the history. When you trade a transcend, a, a great, great player, you're not getting that. Kawhi Leonard, before he got injured, was the de facto best two-way player in all of basketball. Oh, you're admitting that now? Oh, I've, I've oh after been, a whole year, you wouldn't admit no, no, it? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I said see. Now that the, you want him on your side? No, 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 no. I've always said he's <clears> the best <throat> two-way player. He's hmm. just not the best three. Oh. We know who that, where that oh. resides, Skip Bayless. Huh. So, with that being... Kevin Durant, or? You got yeah. jokes this morning. Yeah. I see, see, I, mm. I guess you was, mm. you know, you was in mm. Vegas on the weekend. Mm. You, was, you was at the Laugh Factory or something. Mm. You had a stand-up gig. I did go to the Laugh Yeah, yeah, you had a stand-up gig. Did. Yeah, you had a stand-up mm. gig going on because mm. you're trying to be funny today. Mm. Skip Bayless, he's a special type of talent. Yeah. Before he got injured, he was a top five player. Mm. He, can guard one through, he can guard one through four. He can <sighs> handle the ball. He can initiate offense. And he can shut down most players or make it very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, when guys like Kevin Durant or, mm -hmm. or LeBron, they get it going. You're at their mercy. You just hope they miss. Mm. But he can defend them as well as anybody can if there's such a thing as defense. Skip, he's gone, and we're going to just see how well you mm. guys do moving Yeah, forward. and I say good riddance, say Kawhi Leonard. I'm saying what I said from the very start <laughs> at midseason when I told you sitting right here <laughs> that the most conservative and patient medical staff and training staff in all of sports – cleared Kawhi Leonard at midseason to play basketball with a quote-unquote bruised thigh. And Kawhi said, no, I can't play. And the Spurs didn't burn their bridge to Kawhi. He burned his bridge to the Spurs because after a while, they did call a summit. That was with a month left in the season. Mm -hmm. And they said, starting with Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker, 
what's up, man? What, what, are you going to be with us or not? And he, him hawed around. He didn't say a whole lot, as you know. And to your point about Tim Duncan, yeah, I do think they thought he might become Tim Duncan, but Tim Duncan was made of the rightest stuff, and this guy's made of the wrong stuff. He's made of the right stuff. He, he is made of the wrong stuff, and he revealed his character or lack of basketball character. The man's he hurt, doesn't have. Skip. A bruised thigh, and I love Tony Parker for stepping up. He didn't say a lot either publicly, but he said, my injury was a hundred times worse because it was. He ruptured his quadriceps muscle, his thigh muscle. He ruptured it, and it's, it's as freakish an accident as I've ever heard any star player suffer. And it was in the playoffs against Memphis a year ago. And if you can go back and find a 35-year-old who ruptured his quad in a basketball game, you're ahead of me because I don't know one. That's just complete freak accident. I think Charles Barkley did that. I don't think he ruptured his thigh, did I think, he? I think, I think it was his quad tendon. He I don't ended know, because I've checked the, the history season. of it, and I, I don't know one, but whatever. Maybe he did. Mm -hmm. But my point is, his was 100 times worse. It tore in two. He, he lost it, and it's a six-month rehab. Mm -hmm. Kawhi Leonard had a bruised thigh? A bruised thigh and you quit on your team, you know why he quit? Because the expectations of trying to live up to, for the first time ever, preseason MVP predictions. Chris Broussard sat right here in this seat and predicted that Kawhi Leonard, for the first time, would win the MVP this year. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And Kawhi crumbled under those expectations and under the new expectations for him to become the face of the franchise, the Tim Duncan for the Spurs. He's not that guy. He is a number two star. He was great in the shadow of Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker. That's how he sneaked in and won the finals MVP. Mm -hmm. But if you make him the guy, if you make him the centerpiece, the focal point, he crumbled under that pressure, and now he wants out to go to the Lakers so he could play in the shadow of one LeBron James and maybe in the shadow of Paul George. Stop, stop. Yeah. Okay, but you had no problem. Now, you, you, you heap so much praise on Kawhi when you say – before Zaza for cheap shots, slid yeah. his foot up under his well, They were up 23 at that point. And, and who had it no going? No expectations. And who had it going? Kawhi well, all was of them cooking. Had it going. Kawhi that was guy, cooking. Oh, please. Well, if all of them had they it going, why would when Kawhi left, they end up losing by double digits okay. when they had a 20 point And lead. at that point, everybody said, wait a minute, maybe he is what, what I'm saying he was. He Maybe yeah. he's that guy. He's that guy. And then whenever I said going into this year, he's that guy. He fell apart and quit on the San Antonio Spurs. He wants no part of that. Question about appreciation. Skip Ellis, I heard you earlier in the Brady conversation mention when Brady was questioned about the Patriots appreciating him for the mm -hmm. quarterback that he's been to the organization, he pled the fifth. Shannon Sharp, I hear you making an argument about, uh, you know, the value mm -hmm. that Kawhi brings to this team. Right. Do you think he is being appreciated by the San Antonio? Was he being appreciated by the San Antonio Spurs? I, I don't Spurs? think he felt he was being appreciated, Skip, because he said, look at what I've done. I've really given you no indication that I will not play through injury. Skip, he told, he, you know, he wasn't really supposed to be playing. In game six, he ended up sitting out, but he was there for game one of the finals. He could have easily sat out. So he's shown well, you. Which one are you talking about? And when, they, when, they, when they beat Houston, remember he missed that game oh, when James oh, Harden but, stunk but, it up. Yeah. But come game one, he was back. Yeah. And uh, that injury happened earlier and he still gutted, he gutted it up to play. Kawhi is saying, I've really shown you no reason for you guys to, to doubt the severity of my injury. He's saying, Tony Parker, you know why your injury was 100 times worse than mine? Because I'm a hundred times better player than you are. Mm. So any injury that you He's get, not saying that. yeah, that's what he said. Because he wasn't a hundred. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, he when was. When Tony was right, he was the best point guard in basketball. He better than that? Oh, he ended up be the best point guard. Yes, he is. Chris has. Paul and, and yeah. what you call him? Chris Paul no, and Darren Williams no. say no, he's not. No, there was times he was uncoverable, unguardable. But what about Kawhi? Well, show sure enough, he had got, it going. He finally, when, when the spotlight was brightest, mm. he melted. He said ain't no sun he in melted. San Antonio. And guess what? Now it's Lights interesting that reports have it that the Lakers and the Clippers here in L.A. are starting to say, well, maybe he's injury prone. No, ain't nobody yeah. saying that. Yes, I they are. I, get, yeah. I, get, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Tell R.C. Buford to call Magic Johnson and see how many pieces he can get of that young nucleus mm -hmm. and see if Magic thinks well, that. Well, to that point, I laughed at the report that Ebony talked about. I think it was the Chris Sheridan report about Coach Popovich would never trade. I think even, um, I think Byron Scott said that last yeah. week on ESPN. Coach Popovich never traded with the Lakers. Uh, time out. 
Coach Popovich doesn't have final say on trades. R.C. Buford, the best general manager in basketball, and he's shown that over 20 years. Yes, I'll give yeah. you that. He's that guy. Yes. It's his call, and you're right. If, if the Lakers come with the right package, you don't think he'd take it? Yes, he would. But here's the thing, Skip. This, this is really in Kawhi's court. Because nobody's going to give up all those centerpieces without a commitment that he's going to uh, mm -hmm. assign long term. Yep. You'd be a fool mm -hmm. to give up. Let's just say any centerpiece is going to be centered around Kuzma and Ingram. Mm -hmm. We know that. Okay. If well, you what, what if you get Lonzo Kuzma and Ingram? Would you take that? I'd take that for Ooh. Kawhi. See, that's the kind of deal RC would pull off. You might get two or the three. And, a dra and the draft. Why not three? You, you just said you'll never get equal value. I'll take that as equal value. I'll do it. Oh, I, 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 and if LeBron, if, if, if Magic's on the phone with Brian, we got this. Paul, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get this okay, up. Thank I get you. it up. I get thank that you. up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is absolutely. why I'm betting on R.C. Buford far before I'm betting on Kawhi Leonard. As a matter of fact, I'm packing bags for him. Are you? Yeah. Okay, I'll take those three kids right now, yeah, and we'll go forward <laughs> and see what happens. And we'll beat the brakes off. Oh, uh, you might for a year. No, for, for at least three. You might for a year. At least three years. I don't know. At least three. Mm -hmm. Skip, do you think an organization is fair if they question Kawhi about his dedication? Uh, yes. And commitment yes, to the team. absolutely. Because he's been injury prone his whole career there with dubious injuries, like minor injuries, and they would have let him sit for 19 games. Mm. After a while, enough is enough. He made $19 million last year for doing virtually nothing. I think that was a pretty good year for Kawhi. I know a guy that cost himself $180 million by trying to be tough and play through an injury. Uh, One little Isaiah Thomas. Yes. Ask him if he had it to do over again. And the Boston Celtics were saying how hero yep. worship he was. And they played, showed him on the video monitor. They did. And guess what happened? He'll never see that payday mm. again. Kawhi yep. Leonard saying, hey, I might not get 219, mm. but I'm going to get 180. Okay, well, good luck next year to you and your Lakers. Yeah, no, no, that's no, how no, it's going to be. We don't need no Lakers. LeBron no and Kawhi. And LeBron's going to be saying, Kawhi, what's wrong? You, you yeah, hurt again? That. Guess you what? You can't play again. Hold on. He's played with Kevin Love <laughs> and he's played with Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Both of those guys have suffered a lot of injuries in the process of playing with him. Mm. So LeBron knows what it's like to go it alone. Mm. Well, he may be going alone next year. Touché. No, he ain't. Yeah. Word on the street, though. The Cowboys <laughs> are looking to surprise some people in the NFL really? next season. We'll debate it. That's really? up next. Get a surprise. No mercy. All right, today it's another great day of World Cup coverage here on FS1. Guys, it's been a really great tournament so mm -hmm. far, right? So far. So far, so good. Shocking upset yesterday, Mexico over Germany, 1-0. Wow. But to me, it wasn't that shocking because Mexico was routinely underachieved in this tournament. Cool. And I think uh, Germany was there for the taking, right for the taking. I'm not counting out Germany from this point on, but I am looking at Mexico as the team on the rise in this tournament. Skip. Iceland tying Argentina. Yeah. Lionel Messi is on Argentina. And he got blocked in the PK he again. Did. He did. They might need to start thinking, let's I understand he's great, mm. but sometimes, Skip, the greatest player don't shoot the free throw in the technical foul. Mm. So you might want to think about letting someone else take that PK instead yeah. of Messi. And also Brazil being tied by Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Skip, they're known for watches and chocolate. Mm. You can't tie that behemoth, Brazil. Yeah. Brazil, you can't let that happen. So let Kyle Corver shoot the free throw, not LeBron. No, see, there you go. See, you all. All right, guys, we're going to get back to the NFL now. Yeah. The Cowboys, they missed the playoffs entirely last season. Listen, they lost two of Dak Prescott's targets in Des Bryant and Jason Witten. Mm. But Dak, he's still feeling good about things. He says that the new guys can really be some playmakers and that they're going to, quote, be out to surprise a lot of people. Shannon, do you like Dak Prescott saying that he plans to surprise No. Them? No. No, absolutely not. Skip, you're the most... You're worth the most. You're the most visible franchise in all the world. Can you imagine, since we were just talking about soccer, football as it's known across the mm -hmm. world, can you imagine Cristiano Ronaldo saying, you know what, Real Madrid, we're going to surprise some people this year. <laughs> mm. Well, how would that go? Aaron Judge for the Yankees. We're going to surprise some people this year. Mm -hmm. Huh, Skip Bayless? Mm. How would that go over? You're playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody loves mm. the Cowboys, Skip. Mm. And Dak Prescott talking about, we're going to surprise some people. Mm. Really? No. Cleveland should say that. The Miami Dolphins should say that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Denver Broncos should no, say no, that. No, no, don't do that, Skip Bailey. Don't <laughs> do that. See, there you go. You ruined a good conversation. <laughs> Skip, you can't say this. You're 
quarterback of the Dallas mm, Cowboys. Right. And you're talking about we're going to surprise <laughs> some people. A franchise that's worth over $5 billion. More people recognize the star in the silver and blue than Real Madrid, mm -hmm. FC Barcelona. Yep. PSG, mm -hmm. the Yankees, and you got your starting quarterback saying, we gonna surprise some people. Hmm. How that going on? How you like that, Skip Bayless? I can't defend it. All I can say is what a difference a year makes <laughs> because one year ago today, nobody was talking about the Cowboys surprising anybody. They were talking about the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl, yes. right? Yes. And then this happened. The worst Cowboy offseason I can ever remember in all my years as a Dallas Cowboy fan, going back to the 60s, mm -hmm. because they had the most blah draft I can remember. Yeah. They were all too quiet in free agency. As you remember, they missed out on Sammy Watkins. I guess they were in that derby, but that, that's what the report was. But that, does Jerry ever miss when he decides he wants somebody? Nope. nope. And he missed on Sammy Watkins. And we've had player after player in trouble. Terrence Williams, bizarre incident with the crash car and the electric bike. I don't know what it was. And now David Irving is suspended again for four games to start the season. The potential monster who isn't is that, David Irving. Isn't that five consecutive years they've yeah. had a defensive starter yep. to start the season on a suspension list here? It is. Yet... Of all the non-moves that happened, one move did happen. And I told you from the start, as in the end of the regular season, one thing had to happen for the Cowboys to have a chance next year. And that did happen. Jerry Jones cut bait with Des Bryant. And I still can't believe he did. Yeah. But he did. And by the way, Des is still unsigned as we speak. Mm -hmm. I think that's not a ringing endorsement of Des's skills at this age, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So they did that. And they still have Dak and Zeke. I question their uh, maturity levels, maybe, right? Well, but, uh, I mean, okay, uh, okay Skip. Uh, he brought a water gun that uh, was a symbol of something else. Yeah, they something went else. to the party. Uh, I mean, what's wrong with I mean, he's shooting a bunch of commercials. He, I mean, the, the, the sponsors, they love him. Mm. I still love him. And they still have Dak Prescott, who is at least Brady-esque. I'm not saying he's Tom Brady, but he's Brady-esque. And Brady. he did have, no, he, he had the third best QBR two years ago and the fourth best last year. So he plummeted all the way to fourth. And Zeke will be on a mission to get even with the league just the way Tom Brady was on a mission after his four-game suspension, you remember, after deflating. If you don't mind me asking Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. in his second year, Tom Brady led the Patriots to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. If I had to say, okay, who, had, who has more talent, the Dallas Cowboys in year two, year three, or the Patriots, Tom Brady's second year? More talent overall? Overall. Well, you told me that he had one of the greatest coaches ever, and I got Jason Garrett, whoa, right? Whoa, whoa, Maybe whoa. You, you said he does have the, the greatest coach ever, well, hold on. right? Well, hold on. I'm using your argument against you. I've been you. trying to tell you that for the longest mm. time. Mm. LeBron James has yet to play for a Hall of Fame coach, but that's none of our huh. business, Ebony. Wait, uh, I'm just asking you just a there. second. In year two, did Tom Brady's running back get suspended for four games? No. Six games, I mean? Six no. games. Antoine, yeah. Antoine, I mean, oh. you, you had him. Oh, interesting. This is what's going to be surprising, will be surprised to no one. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel Elliott will be carrying the football an awful lot. Mm. When Ezekiel Elliott is in the, is in the lineup, no team mm. runs the football mm -hmm. more than said Dallas Cowboys. Okay. So I don't know what you think about that, but I'm telling you what the uh, offensive coordinator okay. and the head coach thinks of it. So who potentially will have the best offensive line in football next year? Maybe the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all potentially had it last year. What happened? Okay. Well, there were some injuries to, to the left tackle. Who's simply the best run blocker in all of football? He can make a case. Ty he's Smith. the best tackle in football. Yeah, okay, so he was gone for four crucial games without Zeke. You said his so, back holds up all year. Okay, I I don't know, but what if it does? And they added Cameron Fleming from Tom Brady, his right tackle, who played some left tackle. So you have a quality backup, if not a better right tackle. What, what Lyle we, Collins moves to left guard. Uh oh, Shannon, you in if, trouble? What have we seen from Ty Smith over the mm. last couple of years? Dominance. An injury that keeps him out of a game. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, it's keeping him out two games. Mm -hmm. Now, it's four games. Yep. Now, it's six. I mean, I don't know, Skip. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a, look, I'm not an orthopedic. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can tell you what. Backs don't get better with age. Mm -hmm. I do know that. Mm -hmm. I think he's only 27 as we speak. So, yeah, he's let, let just him, entering his prime. Let him start going into that back. 
Oh. Let, me know how that, let me know how that work out for mm. you. What if it does work out? I, I hope it does. Yeah. I, you I, hope it does. I hope it does. Be in trouble. But I'm just trying to figure out why yeah. would a quarterback on the Dallas Cowboys, the most mm -hmm. recognizable sports, not sports franchise, not just in North America, mm -hmm. we're talking about the world. Mm -hmm. and as big as Real Madrid and FC Barcelona mm -hmm. or, or Man United, mm -hmm. as big as all of those are, the Yankees. Yeah. PSG, that's another one. Neymar play on that team. Mm. People don't think I'd be normal. What What are the Cowboys' odds to win the Super Bowl? I think they're down to like 18 to 1. Well, so well, that would require shocking the world, right? But no, Skip, when you're on that, you don't say surprise. Yeah. See, Kobe, Kobe Bryant could never say, well, I'm surprised. Well, we're going to surprise some people. Mm. Mm. You're the Lakers. Mm. You can't be surprised at anything when you see all those gold uh, Larry O'Brien Award mm. and all those banners and all those statues out front. Yep. You can't be surprised by anything. You walk in the Cowboy mm. Stadium, you got five rings, yep. and you see all the Hall of Famers mm. from Randy White to Emmitt and Michael Irvin and Leroy mm. Jordan and all those guys. Mm. You can't be – you're the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you did mention Ernestine and I were in Vegas the last couple yeah, of days. Yeah. So we were just kind of cruising around, walking through the casino. We walked through the sports book at the win, and I looked up, and the Cowboys were 18 to 1. And I turned to her and said, I think I might put a couple bucks on that. I'm not a gambling man. Mm -hmm. And at the last second, I – Pulled out my wallet and I thought, no, I don't want to jinx them. Because no, I, I like no, the no, no, no. one. I like you don't it. want to give your money away. Because no, that just might, you might as well just walk up mm. down the street and somebody jinx. panhandling. I'm not and jinx. it's like, hey, excuse me, can you pay, yeah. pay, spare a couple of dollars? Yeah. You might, you came out better just giving it to him because that had been for a great cause. Mm. That had been your good deed for the day. Mm. But you giving your money to the win yeah. so they can build another win because yeah. you know if you put your yeah. money on the Cowboys, that money mm. gone. But win at the win. Shannon, yeah. you've been a little hard on Dak for the actual comic because I appreciate your. Yes. point they are america's team yes. it's the dallas cowboys yes. there's no sports franchise in the world more recognizable yes. but the facts are that they missed the playoffs last yeah. year the facts are they don't have good odds skip talked mm -hmm. about the the you know kind of lackluster off season mm -hmm. so maybe dak's trying to raise morale maybe he's mm -hmm. trying to give his teammates something to feel good about mm -mm. Mm -mm. No? The cowboys well, what do you want him to say we got no shot hey, i want i want, <laughs> I want to say we're gonna we're gonna wreck shop oh yeah we wreck okay. it Oh. Yeah, we about to hit like an 8.0 on the Richter yeah. scale. You, we reckon the NFL. You need to take Wednesday off because no. my man Dak is coming He's on this coming. show and you do not need to be here. Whoa, whoa. You will muck up that interview. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Skip, yeah. I just want to sit back yeah. and talk to old Dak. Yeah. Yeah, Dak cool. Yeah, I don't think you're very cool. We right cool, now. Skip. Yeah, because right. you were on some flight with him. No, we. Tried to kiss up to him on the flight. You, you no, nope, won't work. Rookie of the year, Skip. Yeah. We took pictures outside the yeah. Cowboy yeah. bus. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, yeah. be Dak. Me and Dak go back like Kossi. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we go way back. <laughs> uh, over in the NBA, is Kawhi Leonard on his way to L.A.? We're going to discuss mm. that up next with our own Chris Broussard. Stay with us. I'm Beautiful out here, Kawhi. Mm. No mercy. ESPN reports Kawhi Leonard wants out of San Antonio, and he'd like to go to Los Angeles, preferably with the Lakers. Now, Kawhi is reportedly frustrated with the Spurs organization, and he could out, opt out of his contract and become a free agent next summer. Chris Sheridan reports that there's a 0% chance that Greg Popovich would trade Kawhi to the Lakers or any other team in the West. All right, we're joined now by FS1's NBA analyst, Chris Broussard. Chris, mm. we talked about it, but I want to know what you think. How does this play out? Well, you know, I would tend to agree with Chris Sheridan that I'm sure trading Kawhi to the Lakers is the Spurs' last resort. Mm. Remember how upset Greg Popovich was with Memphis? when they traded Pau Gasol to the Lakers. <laughs> so, I, I look, why in the world would the Spurs give Kawhi, number one, what he wants? When he wants out, why in the world would you give him what he wants? Mm -hmm. Number two, why would you strengthen a conference rival? And so I, I think that they'll look to the East. You know, they, the Spurs have some leverage. Kawhi obviously has got leverage because he can tell any team I'm not mm -hmm. staying long term. Hey, that's all. He's going to nip every, any deal. But they have some leverage, too, because I was talking to an executive yesterday from a Western Conference team that said, if I'm the Spurs, I wouldn't trade him. You still have through February, right, to the deadline to at least, if you want to try to play it out and try to make amends. Look, we, I doubt he can sit out again, okay? So you try to make amends. If that doesn't work, if you do that, guess what? What if the Lakers go out and sign LeBron and Paul George? Now they no longer have the cap room to go out and get Kawhi. So he can't say anymore, I'll just walk to the Lakers as a free agent. Then he's, you, you can trade him wherever you want because he can't stay with L.A. 
So, look, here's the thing, too, with Kawhi. If I'm him, I'm, I get wanting to be in L.A., wanting to be at home. You're from here. But, man, I think Boston and Philly are both better options. And I know that his uncle who's advising him, Dennis Robertson, is close with Kawhi, or Kyrie's dad. Mm-hmm. And, look, I don't know. I have no idea how Kawhi feels about playing with LeBron. But I know that his uncle has heard whatever horror stories Kyrie had that led him to want out of Cleveland, mm-hmm. Denny Robertson has heard him. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, again, I don't know how that affects Kawhi or even Dennis, whether, whether he would want him to play with LeBron. But I know he's heard those stories. And if, if Kawhi and Kyrie are tight, and I don't know that they are or not, why in the world wouldn't you stay in Boston and build something there where you're in the East, you'd be the favorites, even with Philadelphia, you'd yep. be the favorites for the next several years. You got a great organization. I think he needs to look there. Or Philly, too. Mm-hmm. If he went to Philly, he'd be the veteran they need. He'd be the first or second scoring option. And he could be viewed as the guy that gets them over the top. So, But, it, it look, obviously you're looking at LeBron, Kawhi, and Paul George if this works out for the Lakers but I just don't know why the Spurs would play ball with that. Hmm. I know oh, why. Yeah. Because, first of all, you, this is what we know, Chris. You covered this game long enough. The team that trades the superstar normally loses the trade. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's hard to get back equal value Except for, for him. for Cleveland. For, <laughs> they, 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 they definitely <laughs> lost that trade. But here's the thing. If you got those pieces, <laughs> say Ingram and Kuzma, or Ingram and Lonzo. Well, I d- you definitely don't see Lonzo going there, right? Well, I don't see. I Le- can't see Levar and Pop <laughs> or RC Buford. I don't. See, I can't see them. I don't Lonzo. see how Lonzo is stays with the Lakers if they get Kawhi, LeBron, and Paul George. There's really no need for him because you have two guys. Really, you have three guys that can initiate offense. Yeah. And Le- Lonzo is not a spot up shooter. So what use will he be to them? So with that being said, yeah, sure he could go. But I think LeBron James is on the phone right now with Kawhi. So what you thinking, bro? Hmm. Because what we can do, we can put this thing together. Hmm. Because in everybody's mind, uh, one... Ron better do a lot of talking because he's not going to hear much back. Oh, oh yo, Kawhi, oh, Kawhi, he Kawhi. doesn't say anything. Look here, let me tell you something, yeah. Skip Bayless. When LeBron James picks up the phone and yeah. call, yeah. you take that call. Oh, there are okay. very few people in the world that you can say, I'm busy. What if his hand is hurt? No, they, 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 ain't nothing wrong with his hand. Ain't nothing wrong with his hand. Man, how oh, you... Oh, oh, this used to be your guy. Oh, Skip, I'm here's done. the thing. I'm out. When, <laughs> this is what everybody should be thinking. Mm. How do we take down that team from the Bay? Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about no Eastern Conference. Sure. I'm not worried about no Western Conference. I'm worried about mm-hmm. how do we beat that big four. And this is a big start. Because I tell you what, if those three guys link up in L.A., we're on a collision course. And, they go, and I love, I don't just like my chances. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. my chances with the Lakers. I would love them more if you got Kevin Durant to come to L.A. with LeBron. No, no, no. No, 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 no. the Golden State Warriors while strengthening we, the Lakers. We want them strong. That would really We want them strong. Would, would you like Kevin Durant and LeBron in L.A. Yeah. better than those three in L.A.? LeBron, Kyrie, or yes. Kawhi, and oh, yes. George? Yes, because I don't trust the two complementary stars in the biggest moments. I don't trust Kawhi. Kawhi no complimentary star. Stop saying that. He's, he's not he's a, a superstar. He is not a superstar, and you know it, and I know he's it. A su- he's a superstar. You got to admit. Whether he's He doesn't the have a superstar that, he's a superstar backbone, like basketball backbone. He got exposed this year. But he, do you think that's a ex- You know what? I, you, I've used you. You were one of the first to say, he is going to win the MVP. Yeah. You predicted yeah. that. He crumbled under those expectations. He crumbled for the first time under the expectation of, you need to become Tim Duncan, not in ability or performance, just in stature. You need to take this franchise over. And he crumbled. He had a bruised thigh, and he played nine games with it. Are you kidding me? He, he quit on that team. But it was you said much. that team, Skip. Mm-hmm. It, do you, my question is only this. Do you think some of that lack of backbone that you are pointing mm-hmm. out here is specific to the Spurs organization? Does that automatically transfer if he's in an L.A. or another market? Well, obviously, his dream job would be to play in LeBron's yeah. shadow with the Lakers. Yeah, no, stop shadow. saying that. Well, I'm not just telling you. I, okay, and by the way, I got to say this, too. But, but we can bring Lakers up the Chris Sheridan report, yeah. and Chris has been Kevin in this leg, uh, league for a long yeah. time, as you know, but stop it. 
in the end, R.C. Buford runs the San Antonio Spurs, not the head coach. The head coach does not have final say over personnel moves. The GM does, and he is simply, over time, proven to be the best GM in basketball. Mm -hmm. I trust R.C. Buford a lot more than I trust Kawhi Leonard. So I'm going to bet on R.C. in this whole notion, the old bromide about you never get back equal value for a superstar. Well, uh, you better be careful with this guy. He just might. And I've already thrown this out. If the Lakers want to give the Spurs Lonzo and Kuzma and Brandon Ingram, I'm good to go. They would. Do that. I'm okay. sure they do would. It. Do it. I'm you good. Think, you I'm think good. the Spurs would want Le – forget Lonzo. LeVar? I think, Can you I think Greg Popovich would want Lonzo, though. He would love I, Lonzo. I think he'd like Lonzo. I just think Le I cannot see LeVar Ball in San Antonio. And I'll say this, Skip, I think LeVar RC. can't see LeVar in San Antonio. <laughs> right? That's true, too. I, you're right. RC, and look, I think R.C. Buford in the Spurs front office overplayed their hand. Because, I, I, you know, I've talked to people around this situation. You know, a week ago... Ka Kawhi's can't, they were ready to meet with Greg Popovich. And the whole thing was going to be about what they wanted to hear was why when we met with you and the Spurs, everything was good. We're meeting, you're on board, you know we're going to New York, you're sending trainers <laughs> with us to New York. We're saying, let's not play this out in the media, let's not talk. And then a week or two later, I see stories with anonymous sources saying there's tension between Kawhi and the organization. Kawhi began feeling like the Spurs are two-faced. And then a couple days a couple days ago, you know that, a few days ago, the story comes out that Kawhi's going to have to convince the Spurs that he's worth the Supermax when they meet. So now Chris, he's like, Chris this Bruce is Art. one more thing. A month That's ago. That's why he cut the meeting. Okay, a month ago, if I'd asked you the most respected organization in all of pro basketball, you would have said the Spurs. Yes, and, well, and, and it's the same as the Patriots. We've seen leaks coming. Like, now both organizations, you see things breaking down. You're right. I would have said the Spurs. And I have respect for RC and obviously Pop and those guys. But in this situation, you know historically, there are certain types of guys that just have not been Spurs guys. I, I, you Duncan got it. and Robinson, David Robinson, were unique. They were. And there were hey, other and guys. Ginobili's that, unique in his yeah. basketball camp. And Tony Parker. I mean, uh -huh. they're they're from they're yeah. foreigners. Yeah. You know, from Europe and and Argentina. That's a different yep. you know vibe than a lot of American okay, just, black just, kids. I'm going to remind you one more time at midseason. The most conservative and patient medical staff in all of sports cleared Kawhi Leonard to play full speed, full time basketball with a bruised quad. And he said, No, I can't. And then he went to New York to meet with a surgeon and a physical therapist who are close friends of mine. So I know what was going on. And I just got to tell you, the Spurs sat back and said, Seriously? And then they had that big summit meeting mm -hmm. with the players. That was about a month after yeah. that, with a month to go in the season. Mm -hmm. And Tony Parker spoke out and said, my injury is 100 times worse than his because he had a ruptured quadriceps. And you were right about Charles Barkley. In his last year in Houston, he mm -hmm. did rupture. But that's the only other one I've ever heard of. It's a freakish injury for, like, a middle-aged sort of right. star. Yeah. So the point Especially is... Especially guys that's not explosive. Normally not, that happens with guys that are I, very I explosive. I, it's just freakish. Yeah. It's, it's almost like an Achilles tear mm -hmm. where you can't even explain why it happened. But the point is... <laughs> Kawhi Leonard had a bruise, and they, the, the medical people there are saying, wait a minute, you just collected $19 million from us, and now you're in line to get $219 million as a super max, if, if you want to stay home, as, as our franchise player? And they're saying, we, we can't trust you enough to bet $219 million. I wouldn't do it. And, he said, and he's saying, you know what? I don't care. I'll take $31 million he's, less. He's going to have to. See, Kevin Durant and LeBron James can do that because they're making $40, $50 million off the court. Kawhi Leonard is not making that kind of money off the court. So for him to say, you know what? Forget it. Hmm. I'm up out of here. Because, Tony, first of all, Skip, Kawhi Leonard is very respected, too. He doesn't say a whole lot, mm -mm. but you can look at his personality and tell, he'll just ball it in, ball it in. Mm -hmm. And when he blows, he's blowing up out of town. Mm -hmm. See, he's, you can't coach him. And I know he has a, his personality reminds you of Tim Duncan. Quiet, very stoic. They not rah-rah. But, Coach Skip, think about it. Uh, coach Belichick, 
coaches Tom Brady the exact same he way does. he coaches everybody else. Yeah. Pop thought he could coach everybody the same way. Well, Kawhi is a different kind of cat, Skip. Mm. The guy got the same car, a uh, Chevrolet Blaze or whatever kind of truck it is, for 15 years. He ain't bought anything new. The dude still got corn rolls from the 90s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can tell he's a different type of cat. So what, what may sway somebody one way is not going to move him in the other. So, Skip, you had to be mindful of how you handle him. Mm -hmm. So he looks at them and say, you guys think I'm faking. Hmm. You guys think I'm lying. Yeah, but, but remember, Tim Duncan was the rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he Kawhi's was a pebble. That's what he is. Stop yeah. doing this, Skip. No, he's, he's a pebble a... that's going to be okay. haunting y'all. All right. All right. So I, I, I let decade. him haunt. Skip, <laughs> we, but, but also, we got to stop because the doctors say this. Look, there, there have been things that sometimes baffle some of the greatest doctors. Because I go to MD I Anderson and... Yeah. Sure. You, it, see? I go to uh, 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 the Mayo Clinic, or I go to MD Anderson in, in Houston. Yeah. Well, they came. Well, I, well, Mr. Sharp, you okay? Nah, something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I know me. This is not your body. I know what you're telling me. I know what you went to school to train and study for. But I'm not right. Kawhi mm -hmm. says, I understand, guys, what you're saying, but I'm not right. So the Lakers better be careful. No, he Lakers, don't be, be careful. Right next Plunge. Year. Plunge, Lakers. You don't mind if he goes to the Lakers? I, not at all. Especially Ooh. if I get those three wow. back. Oh, you can have them. Have you can have them. You can yeah. have them. Have them. Bye. Bye. Do it. Bye. Do it. Bye. Thank you. Give Bro. me a couple of years and Bro. we'll be right there we, with you. Hey, and give me a couple of years. We're going to have a couple of titles. Really? O'Brien going to go to 10 straight finals in a row. Really? Win them. Wow. He's going to beat the Golden State Warriors beat. with Kawhi Leonard and George Paul. Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Got him. I'm going to put some money on that. I'm going to make well, a, put a whole day. bunch of money on you, that. You take gold. Right back yeah. to the win. There you go. There you go, Skip. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back again tomorrow morning at 930 Eastern.